Welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today it's called Coin Change 2. And so this is a dynamic programming problem where essentially we're given an amount and a set of coins here. And so we're going to try to use these coins to make up, say, this $5. And essentially we're counting up all the possible kind of combinations of these coins that we can use to make up this amount. And so in this case, we could say use just one $5 coin to make $5. You could then use, say, five $1 bills, so like one, 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 or it could use, say, two twos and one, one, or just one, two, and then three, one. So you can basically use a combination of them. You could use, say, just one uh, multiple times or whatever, but basically you can use them multiple times and a combination of them. And you want to count up the number of combinations to make this amount. The only edge case here that they don't really uh, show you in this case um, is another test case, which is basically, okay, how many combinations can we make up the amount of zero given these coins? So if we go ahead and run that, essentially they expect one because there's only one possible, I guess, combination where you can choose not to use any of the coins, uh, which is interesting. Like I think I was just returning zero for that um, and so that edge case caught me off guard. So make sure uh, to think about that and account for in our solution. So and immediately what occurred to me um, is for the kind of top-down memoization approach is say if we're given this amount five, let's start with that. And basically we're going to be subtracting away these coins from it until it hits zero and then we kind of propagate the answer up the chain. And so basically uh, what I thought of is, okay, essentially, initially, you can think of this as like, you can go down three possible paths. You can either subtract one or subtract two or subtract five, but that doesn't really work in this case. And what kind of um, clarified that for me or made that pop in my head was we're only going to return um, two plus two plus two or two plus two plus one and count it as one combination. You don't also want to include, say, uh, one, two, two, or two, one, two. Like these um, choices all count as basically one combination, as it's just a, an assortment of the order in which you're um, choosing them. And so we can't really say that, okay, at every single step at this start, we have three possible choices. How I thought of it is we always have two choices. We have one pointer that starts at kind of the left-hand side of these coins that says, okay, I can either subtract the current coin I'm looking at, which is one, to get to four, or I can basically keep it as five, but now we're gonna start looking at, okay, do I wanna subtract two from five or not? And this kind of prevents that um, counting multiple combinations of essentially the same assortment of coins, if that makes sense. So in this case, you could say, okay, I can subtract two from five, which is three, or I can move on to stay at five, but now look at subtracting five, which would then be zero, because um, you subtract five here. Um, then at three, once again, you can choose to subtract two or move on and consider subtracting five, but well, that won't work with three. So in this case, you would have one, and so that's two, two, and this won't work. And so that would also kind of cancel here. All right, and so essentially, um, you would also expand this out to basically get these uh, remaining combinations. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for the, the recursive kind of relationship that we're trying to build here. So let's go ahead and implement it. So typically the pattern for this, you want to define a DP function here. And, um, oh, I can't type for some reason, there we go. And so essentially that recursive relationship that I just showed you, uh, we wanna consider those two paths as well as that base case of hitting zero and propagating the answer up the chain. Um, but also we wanna be keeping track of uh, two variables here. And that once again is going to be basically I, which is a pointer of the current coin that we're considering. You could also call it coin, uh, for example, but I for the index of the coin. So let's start at the left uh, side coin. And then we're also going to start with the amount of five. And so this amount will be kind of decremented every single time we use a coin. 
All right, so the first thing we want to do is define our base case here. And so naturally that's going to be okay if we run out of coins, let's just stop there. And so if i is greater than or equal to um, the length of our coins, then naturally we're going to want to stop there. We also have another case here of, okay, what if we hit an amount of zero? We basically fulfilled this new combination that we just found. So we also want to start propagating that result up the chain as well. And so what that looks like is, okay, if our current amount n is equal to zero, let's also kind of include that as a possible result. Um, but just to kind of handle edge cases here of, okay, well, if we uh, get a negative number, say we have an amount of three and we subtract five from it, we don't want to actually consider that as a possible case. But to make the logic work out, essentially you can just return um, the amount is equal to zero. So if we actually found a case where n is equal to zero, that is a um, possible result. And so that would return one in this case. So uh, let's return one if this is true. Otherwise, let's not consider this as a possible combination of coins. All right, and so that's our base case, but now we wanna go down those two separate paths or make those two decisions I was talking about. And so let's go ahead and make those decisions. So it's basically um, two recursive calls that we can possibly make. One of them is, well, why don't we stay and keep using the current coin that we have, but let's use it this case. So let's subtract the current uh, number that we have or the current sum that we have uh, by the coin that we're using at this index. So we're basically saying, okay, let's keep using this coin and let's actually use it um, in this case. There, use coins. Or the other case is, okay, why don't we no longer keep using this current coin that we're considering and let's just move on to the next coin and let's just keep the current amount that we're using because we're not using uh, this coin in this case. And so this is pretty good, but the only other thing that um, we need is to cache this. And this is because, well, there's gonna be multiple ways that you can arrive um, at a certain uh, coin index with a certain target. And so avoid doing a bunch of repeated work and basically having like a two to the n uh, factorial solution, you really wanna cache it. So let's try running this. Oh, um, I think we have something wrong here. So, uh, we return zero, so you want to count that. So if n is less than or equal to zero, there we go. Sorry, I just had these flipped. Let's try submitting that. And success. So yeah, that's today's uh, daily code problem. So for time and space complexity, uh, what this kind of looks like, and they're basically the same here. Um, so for time and space, it's going to be O of n, um, where n isn't like the current number, it's the length of uh, the coins, basically, so length of our coins array, uh, multiplied by uh, the amount. And so that's because, well, in the worst case, say these coins, um, they're like, uh, say we have like the coin one in this case, but then we have like whole bunch of other coins like uh, so forth it keeps going <laughs> I didn't really do that right because you can't have uh, repeats but say these are all like uh, different numbers here basically you want to iterate through all these possible coins in this case by uh, this step here and so that's where you get the length of the coins but also in the worst case it's multiplied by the amount and that's because well in the worst case you're only going to be subtracting like one each iteration and that would be like the uh, size of the amount that you're trying to build. And so we get that for space complexity too, because well, we're caching that. So for each combination of these decisions, we're gonna be storing in basically a lookup table uh, for caching purposes. But yeah, I hope that helped a little bit and um, good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.